Hello and welcome, this is Ashraf Jandali and I will be starting some new sessions, I'm calling them Pause Process With Me. Now in that, I will be showing you how the, the way I'm processing my images, I will be getting a new image that I have not processed before and we will process it together and you will see exactly how the procedure that I go through in each and every image. Now every image has its own uh, you know, uh, way to edit it. Each and every image has its own story that we will try to uh, edit it together. So let's get started. In this image, uh, which I have taken in Jordan in the Dead Sea, as you can see, it's a, it's a nice looking image, but definitely there are so many things that we need to do to make this image looks much, much better. Now, the way I deal with stuff, especially when I have uh, such an image, is that I start all the way down and I'm going through, you know, things that you should be knowing about Lightroom. But hopefully, gradually, if you don't have an idea about what I'm going to talk about, about the, you know, Lightroom, maybe you can catch up by time while I'm talking about things. Now, the first thing that I do is that I go to the lens correction, I enable the profile correction, and I remove the chromatic abbreviation. Now, when your lens are known to your camera, uh, the camera, I mean, Lightroom can automatically detect the type of lens that has been used and it will correct all the problems that has been generated by the lens. Now the second thing which I like to try is to go to the camera calibration. In the camera calibration, uh, the profile that you can use and this will work only if you have a RAW image and you're using a RAW image, not a JPEG image. Now I like to try the camera landscape and see the difference between the Adobe uh, Camera Raw or the, um, uh, the the camera landscape. And also there is the um, the camera standard that will also have a different effect. So the way you can choose is that you can try the original, which is the Adobe standard, see what does it do, and choose a different one and compare with between them. Now, as you can see, with the camera standard, you will have a little bit of contrast being added. But if I compare the camera landscape, it will add to me more contrast, which I like in this image. It should, many cases, be different because in some images that may not work properly. But in that case, it works for me. Now, the next thing I do is that I try to find a good white balance. Now, normally I do zoom in to find some kind of things maybe in the trash or some things in the images that it should not contain any color. Um, now as I can see most probably in here nothing much to try with but I will try with the sole that it should be white. So when I click on the eyedropper I will grab it and that sole should be white. So if I click on it that will change the white balance of the image, which I somehow remember almost exactly how the site looked like. So that's almost a good white balance to start with. And at any time you can change that. So let's start with this one. Now, the thing which you need to look about is that the first thing you can try now, normally the exposure and the contrast, I leave them alone in the beginning. Now I can uh, change the highlight. And the highlight, what does it do? Whatever has a highlight or a bright area, that's the only place where it's going to change. Now, what I will be doing is that I'm looking at the highlighted area. In some cases, if you go all the way down, the highlights will look odd. They will not look really original. And something is not really nice will look in the highlight area if you go all the way down. But in that example of this image, it looks nice and I will get more details wherever the highlight are going to appear. The shadows, these are an area which contain shadows. If I take it all the way up, that will add 
more details to the places that were dark because if it's too much dark that's mean you're losing details in these areas and as i said if you go all the way up in most of the cases you will add noise to your image when it was dark and then something came out of this darkness by changing the shadow uh you know slider you may add noise so you have to have this in your mind and you have to reduce the noise in the uh, detail area that we will come to it after a while so I'm fine with having the uh, shadow uh, uh, you know slider all the way up it's still fine with me and then after that I will come to the white and black you have to have some whites and blacks in your images that's why you will see the image having a color of I mean not really a color it looks like uh, has a low contrast that's mean you have a mid uh, you know, uh, uh, you know the midpoint not really looking good. So you have to increase the number of whites and the number of blacks that you have. So if I come to the white and I click on the Alt while I'm pressing on the Alt, I will grab the slider of the white and take it up. Now once I click, it will become black, and I will stop whenever I see a white color. Now as you can see up there is a yellow color which I don't care about but I care once I will get something white like so I will stop so as you can see now Lightroom told me that in this area you are going to lose some details so you need to stop now the same thing with the white but uh, sorry with the blacks but we can go more further with the black if I go all the way to the left now you can see that these spots which are looking black it's Lightroom is telling me that you are losing details over there so that's where again I need to stop now after doing the whole thing you can see that your image is still not having a good amount of exposure so then only you will come to this exposure and increase it so I will go to somewhere like um, six I like to use it from here if you come to this side and then you change uh, that's where you'll get more precise so this is much better for me that looks decent you, you get more details in here okay or maybe I will go a little bit less than that because I have something in mind okay that's good for me all right so now after changing that it's a good thing to play with the clarity but the clarity in this example if I take it you know or, or increase it it's adding more details in so many places in the image and in places which I don't want especially in the clouds or you know I like to have it in some certain areas so I will keep this to a later stage now vibrance and saturation we will uh, deal with that in a different way I don't want to play with this right now so what I will be do uh, or what I will do right now I will grab a brush and in this brush I will increase the clarity okay because I need the clarity to be in some certain areas I will add more uh, exposure uh, because I want to add some details in some certain areas and because those areas are a little bit dark I want to add more exposure to them and I want to add sharpness to that and the sharpness as I can see from the image I may you know uh, add 25 percent of noise reduction so uh, normally I learned uh, from a person called uh, Serge Ramilly uh, he said that there's a technique if you have a hundred you will minus the uh, this amount which is the hundred by the number of uh, noise reduction that you used and that will be the amount of sharpness so let's say for example I added 25% of noise reduction so that's mean 25 or, or 100 minus 25 that will give me um, I think 75 yes so the 75 is what I'm going to add as uh, sharpness so I will add 75 all right I don't need to really be precise with that so 74 that's fine for me and now I will just add this setting to the place where I want the eye to be onto I will add this one to my subject which is which are you know the the salt line as you can see 
okay like so I want that to be over this area okay now as you can see now since this is my subject I want the eye to reach on it now I can now as you can see now from from, from just look to your right side just look away from the image and immediately look back what you will see you will see the subject that I talked about which is this line of line of salt uh, and uh, exactly those two rocks on the right side so this is where the eye is first thing looking at now your eye may go up and see the sky and then again it will come back and rest on the area which is uh, my subject okay so that's why I added a little bit of highlight and I, I have added the clarity so that will let the eye uh, look more into this area now let us try something else which I will add the same setting but on this area as well so I'm not really uh, looking on a certain uh, you know place in the image now in such kind of way what will happen now again do the same same exercise look away from the image and then look back now where your eye is really resting most of the time you'll find it is resting now to the left side you may look at the image but again your eye will come back to the left side and rest over there ignoring the elements or the subjects that I wanted the, the person to look at so that's where you need to know exactly what is your subject and what you want to do with your subject. Alright, so I'm fine with that and then I'll say done. Now as I can see what else we can do. Yes, we said that we want to add uh, noise reduction so I will add the 25 that I talked about. Now with my you know trials with so many images I know from the amount of noise that is available in the image what is the percentage that I need to uh, you know add so I know with this amount of uh, you know noise 25% is more than enough and I don't need to go more than that okay so let's see where we were and what we have right now so if I click on the backslash uh, this is the before and this is the after huge difference between the before image and what we see right now what I like to do as well is to try to add a gradient and once I click on the gradient uh, whatever settings you had before it may be stored so you click on alt and while you are pressing on alt you will get reset over here so click on reset this will reset all the dials that you have and I will add a gradient the reason I'm doing this I would like to add more blue to the sky so I will come with the temperature and I will make it colder so that will add blue to the sky be reasonable don't go all the way too much so it's something that people can easily know that you have done something over there so be reasonable with that and don't go crazy okay I think that's more than enough with the tint if you go all the way to the magenta that will remove the green from your image but I still want to keep the feel that the sunset was there so I don't want to remove the greens from the sky and this is much what I really want to do with this image I don't want to go much more than that also what I like to add is always have some kind of a uh, vignette so be reasonable again with that don't go so much crazy uh, always go to the high level and then go back and see the effect of it and then stop where, wherever you feel that the amount is enough for you that's fine for me so this is without the vignette and this is with the vignette okay so now as simple as that you don't require to do much more in the image your histogram as you can see it's not really all the way to the left or all the way to the right it's somewhere in between so that's mean you, your image is somehow balanced and what else I can try yes I like to try with the blue uh, at the camera calibration you can just try with the saturation of the blue just take it little bit up that will add some nice colors at the you know blue areas uh, that will definitely uh, you will be able to see some difference uh, you know in, in the colors that will add some nice uh, you know uh, extra <coughs> you know colors to the blue so it will give some nice effect 
Now, the last thing you need to be very careful about, and uh, I see so many people, they, they don't really, uh, you know, look at it, is some dust on your lens or your, you know, sensor. So if you look at the image just like that, it's perfect. There is no any problem. But when you zoom in, you will find some, you know, uh, sensor, uh, you know, dust or on the lens maybe. Uh, when I was there, yes, my lens, my sensor was not clean and there was like a very slight, uh, you know, drop of water coming. So most probably some of them are on the lens. So you come with the, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the um, spot remover. What I like to do is I'll be zooming out. I click on it and then I will click on the visualize the spot. Now, since there are some clouds, this may not be helpful. So I can see some, I can see this is a spot. This is again a spot, but so many other places you are not going to be sure. But if the sky is clear, you will definitely uh, have this option uh, be very useful. But at that stage, I'll click on space and then click. That will zoom in 100%. And now I can click and remove the spots that I can see with my eyes. Uh, this is somehow a bit tricky to remove, but hopefully Lightroom will be able to remove it easily and uh, come on be faster than that okay good now I can you know go through the image and you have to you know scroll through the image from all the places to make sure that there is no any spot because that will degrade your image if anyone spot these spots okay there are some spots which they are available in the image so you have to be sure that you remove all of them anyway i'm not going to take your time uh, removing all the many spots that i have in my image so as you can see we have started come on man be faster than that it's a bit slow sometimes when you use the spot that's what i hate about lightroom when you are using the um, you know spot remover it will become very slow anyway so we started with such kind of image and we have ended with this image it's a decent image looking nice you don't really need to do much of it as you can see it didn't take much time from us so super easy super fast and i hope that you found this uh, you know um, uh, good information in in this uh, uh, tutorial what i would like you to do is if you have any suggestion or you found like maybe I would have tried something different, please write this in the comment. And if you still did not subscribe to my channel, please do that because whenever I add new uh, you know, videos, which I will try my level best to do it frequently now because I am really back for you guys. So you subscribe to my uh, channel and uh, you will get an email whenever I add a new video. So uh, again, you, you can support me with your likes, you can support me with your subscription and you can support me with your sharing of, of these videos. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.